There we go. So welcome to the 2022 planning workshop. So I did one of these before Christmas and it went really well um, and the feedback was really good. So I thought, right, I can actually do this one with some confidence uh, this year. Um, every year I try and do something like this, um, but this is the first time I've kind of gone into a bit more of a uh, interactive way of doing it. So the idea is that I'm going to ask you some questions. You're going to you know, hopefully have a bit of chance, a bit of headspace to actually sort of think about the questions, think about what you want to achieve this year, come up with some goals, come up with some intentions, and then we can work around some sort of other author intentions and goals in case you're looking for a bit of inspiration to sort of know what other people are doing. Um, and then some tips and tricks, basically, again, picked up from authors that I've worked with over the past 10 or so years of what seems to work for them. Just to say, obviously, what works for one person, as you know, is not necessarily going to work for you. So you really have to decide what you want to do, um, you know, cherry pick from, from all the stuff that I'm saying and, and your own experiences. But I have um, been doing this now, as you know, for about 10 years. And um, one of the things that I've really come to realise, as much as I hate routine, and I, I tell myself I hate planning, is actually that planning is the one thing that actually gets me through uh, and gets me to do the things I need to do. So... I'm kind of all for the planning side of things, but again, doing it how you want to do it. Um, I would say that the main thing that's really grown uh, with us as we've grown over the past couple of years has been my um, attitude towards planning. and But not just planning for the sake of it, planning and then kind of having goals at the end of the plans and trying to keep on top of what I've managed to achieve and what I haven't managed to achieve. So I think it's quite easy to kind of get lost in the quagmire of to-do lists and um other tasks when you're trying to write a book and sometimes the not just the writing of the book but actually all the stuff that goes around it the um the marketing the social media everything it kind of gets a bit to the bottom of the to-do list and if anyone kind of um, empathizes with that and it's like how do we get that to the top of the to-do list but how do we also work out exactly what it is that we want to achieve um so we're going to establish some goals and some targets and some intentions and what i'd love to do is have some accountability as part of this group so again you don't have to do this if you don't want to but if anybody wants to afterwards be um sort of held accountable in other words um i could partner you up with another person and every now and then you check in and just say how's it going did you manage to do the thing you said you were going to do and i think just having somebody there checking up on you sometimes gives you enough of a kick up the bum to actually do the thing you need to do right so that's another thing that we're hopefully going to manage to get out tonight we're going to run through a presentation and then at the end we're going to have Q&A but at any point during the session if you've got um sorry someone else is coming in if you've got any questions feel free to interrupt and I am going to be asking if anybody wants to share then um some you know at various points throughout the evening then again you'd be very welcome to I'm going to crack on um so what I'd first of all like to just do is share my screen let's hope it works Here we go. Can you all see that? Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yahoo! It's working. Okay. So, so here are the outcomes that I would love to, for you guys to get out of this workshop. Okay. So, fingers crossed, we get as many of them done as possible. So, the first one is a bit more clarity of vision around what it is you actually want to achieve out of your author career in 2022. We want to set some goals and we want to make a bit of a plan and try and reduce that, that overwhelm because i think if you've got a plan you're going to feel less overwhelmed by the amount of stuff you've got to do and then we're going to like i say establish some kind of accountability um that can be like, that you buddy up with someone else or it can be that you just drop me a line and i can be the person it's up to you um but we're going to try and make that happen so here we go so hopefully you've got a pen and paper there or you can just, you know, tap it out on the computer or whatever. Oh, that's it's good then. really good to know what do you want to achieve in this planning workshop? Have you had any chance to think about the sorts of things that you would like to do this year? So have you got any plans at all for your author career this year? Um, have you thought about any of the sorts of goals, intentions, things that you want to actually do? Um, and... If you can't achieve your goal, I really don't think that, you know, you, sorry, if, you, if you're not clear on your goal, you really can't achieve your goal. So if you're not clear on what it is you're trying to achieve, you've got zero chance of success. So there needs to be some clarity around what it is you're trying to achieve um, before you can actually achieve it. Sounds so obvious, but the number of people that kind of go into this thinking, oh, well, I just kind of want to, 
you know, maybe be like, I just want to be like a successful author. It's like, but what does that mean? Is that that you sell a certain number of books, that you get a certain number of followers, that you get another book deal, that you finish another book and get another traditional publishing deal? What is it that you want from your author career? Try and be as specific as you can. Um, so we we're going to set that vision and that intention and that goal. And then I think once you've set that intention, you're going to see that that's when it actually starts to come about. You need the clarity in your own brain before anyone else can kind of see it, I think. Does anybody want to share anything at this point about how they're feeling about this? Is it is it just ridiculously nerve wracking? Do you not have a clue about what you're doing? Feel free to share and be honest. I can share. Go, if... Krista. Okay, I want to. So I'll, I like to put um, goals that I think are hard, like getting published. That was pretty hard, but I made that. Um, so I want to sell 10,000 books of the Beast Hunters um, yeah. in any format. Um, yeah. So I'll just add up everything. I want to publish the book two of the Beast Hunters, and I want to get at least 500,000 kroner. That's like 50,000 pounds funding for the movie with my producer. Those are my three pretty high-end goals, I'd say. Nice. Yeah. And do you have a timeline on those? Um, at the end of this year, I guess. That's what I pictured, at least. Yep. Cool. Any criticism is welcome. If no, I think they're all, I think they're all, I mean, especially after that rights conversation we had this morning, I think that's all very feasible, Krista. Yeah, I would love <laughs> That would be cool. <laughs> yeah, I think 10,000 copies is realistic. Um, you've got oh, connections, yeah. so you can do the, you know, you've got the funding um, connections. And book two, I mean, a lot of that's down to really you writing book two and getting it done, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, so I will at least, well, okay, do whatever I can on my end to get book two out there. And I'm close to having one revision done already, and then I'll send it over to you guys. So cool. So you're already yeah. on track. You've already it's only the 10th of January, and you've already you're already on track to doing yes. one of yes. the three goals. Exactly. I have three chapters left. Perfect. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to share? Because it could always inspire uh, yes. someone else. Uh, I know what I want to do this year as well. Cool. Um, I've been writing a prequel to I Am Winter, mm -hmm. which I want to put out as a reader magnet. Mm -hmm. um, so that's almost finished. Brilliant. Um, that was first task of the year. So I'm well on track for that at the Brilliant. moment. Um, I also have a trilogy in mind, a young adult trilogy, Cozy Mystery. Um, that I've already outlined the first book. So next goal is to get that first book written. And then hopefully yeah. by the end of the year, outline the, outline the two following books. Nice, okay. Can I ask some questions about that? Yeah, 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 yeah please, please do. Like yeah. Okay. okay, nice. So Denise, you're writing a sequel to I Am Winter? And no, that's going to be, no. A prequel. Oh, perfect. Yeah, oh, that's so good. <laughs> Do you know where you and how you're going to distribute the reader magnet? Um, not at the moment. No, I I want to maybe I, buy book funnel. Um, I, yeah, okay, book funnel is great, and also story origin. I like that better, better than book funnel, but they essentially do the same thing. But yeah, check out story okay. origin too. It's fantastic. I had all, with, all before I published the Beast Hunters. When I only had my book magnet in the same universe, I ended up with 650 people on my mailing list with just one book magnet through Story Origins. It's a really good resource. Nice. Yeah. So everyone, if you're not a, if you don't have book magnets and on, and it has to be good, of course, and you're on Story Origin yeah. or Book Funnel, get on it. It's amazing. Okay, that's good. Thank you. How do you use your mailing list, Krista? Give us an example of how you use it. So. I, you know, I try to build up hype for the book. Uh, well, so the, the Beast Hunters was published on the 18th of November. So two months in advance, I like, well, you do, you show them your book, your new book cover, and then you try to build up hype. And then on the day of the release, you send out two emails, maybe in two particular days where you try to get them to buy the book uh, after you've built it up for in other emails, like maybe one a month right. until release like that. Yeah. And then, you know, now that I, when I get the audio book, I'm going to send it out there. So it's like, you really get the word out to many different parts of the world, um, depending on, you know, it's a lot of people in the USA. And same thing now, um, 
I would be like when I have some good news or anything, and uh, I'll just send it out to all those people. And I always yeah. have like, a, hey, you can buy the book uh, here if you want it. Blah, blah, blah. So you, you include links to various places for them to buy. Yeah. Yes, and also what you can do on um, so what you I want like, what you should do on Story Origin is that you should join group promos with your book magnet because then you're everyone who joins with a book will send out to their email lists. There might be okay. people with 600 people, 4,000 people, you know, and then suddenly you have all this reach. That's how I got group promos is how I got all those people almost. Nice. Because um, then to download your book, man, they have to sign up to your mailing list. Now, some people yes. uh, unsubscribe immediately and that's fine, you know, um, but some stays, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly yeah. that. Nice, so that's very good. Right. Very cool. Has anyone got any other, does anyone else want to contribute or are you feeling ready to move on and get some more inspiration from other people and from, from what's going on? I don't want to make anyone feel like they have to. Yes, I've got 25 goals and I'm ready to go. <laughs> We're all good. Okay, right. So I think it's a really good idea to look at what you've done already, just like Chris has just said, that couldn't have been a, a better segue, Krista. It's almost like we planned it. Um, what you actually did in 2021 that worked. So yeah, we could dwell on all the stuff that didn't work, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna be positive to start 2022. What did you do that actually really, really worked for you that you could build upon this year? Now it could be that you spent a bit more time on on Twitter and try to build up more of a connection with the writing community on there. Maybe you did some investment in some PR. Maybe you um, built a new website or you spent some time working on the content for your website. Perhaps you started a podcast or you were interviewed on a podcast. Um, perhaps you just literally started writing a book and that in itself was a big success for you. But think about something that you've done, anything, even if it feels small, try and think about something positive that you did in 2021 that really, really worked. And then have a think, like I say, about how you could use that, sort of propel that to be even bigger, um, then um, even better and even stronger for you. I think a lot of us spend too much time, far too much time on the, uh, the negative and the stuff that didn't work um, and forget about the fact that you've done some stuff that actually really, really did work. Um, so, for example, um, a couple of the authors I worked with last year um, who really loved being interviewed um, on like radio and stuff like that, they decided to set up together a podcast, um, which I thought was a really cool idea. And so they've got this podcast that's like their genre and um, they've kind of been very self-starting in that respect. But what they've done is build up a network then by interviewing other authors, like much bigger names in the field and kind of using their um, network to kind of, you know, pull in people and stuff. And so there's ways of turning what they enjoyed, part of the process they enjoyed in, into something even more positive for this year. So um, yeah, have a think about that. I'm not gonna ask you to share every single point of this, but hopefully it's just a bit of food for thought. So when it comes to getting a vision, I believe that it's basically a combination of purpose and mission and values. So I think everybody, when, if you're a writer, you have, you, there's some sort of purpose behind you. There's like a a reason why you're writing um you know it's it's yes of course it could just be for entertainment you want to entertain people bring some light into people's lives you know um it could be that um you want to educate them and inform them about a topic that you think is really important um there's loads of reasons it's like what your purpose is, is what gets you out of bed every morning and that's why you write that's the thing that you um kind of get out of bed to do it's the thing that motivates you um, so I think that's really important to bear that in mind, to have that kind of clarity of what's your purpose, because sometimes when it's really hard and you kind of maybe haven't done the stuff that you needed to do, it's easy to kind of think, oh, I don't need to do this. No one cares. But they do. And your purpose is linked to that. And then you've got your mission, which is like sell 100,000 books, get a three book deal, make loads of money, quit the day job, um, educate loads of people about X, Y, Z there's kind of a mission statement almost there as well. And then you've got your values, which is basically what's important to you. So morally, ethically, what's like your voice, what makes you tick. So if you combine all of those things, you're going to end up with a vision and that vision is going to be short term. So for this year, and that's a good place to start. And then you can think longer term. So 2020, 2030, 2040, however far you want to go. Um, 
And a really good question to ask yourself is, what are you known for now? So if somebody said to you, oh, yeah, I know you, I know your books, I know your writing, I know your work, you are, duh, 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 I like you because you do, duh, duh, duh. What, would, what would that be? What, and then what do you want to be known for? So it's like, it's not always obviously the case that you're, you are now at where you want to be in a few years time, and that's fine, you have to get there. But what's, where are you now and where do you want to be? Um, part of that is perception. So author brand is all about perception. It's the perception of other people about you and your writing. And as you know, I'm always going on about author brand. And author brand is basically the thing that you own. That's your thing that you can shape and cultivate and move and, and adapt and evolve, depending on what you're writing or where you want to go. And your writing is part of the author brand. So if you think about it, what do you want to be known for? What do you want your writing to, to sort of do to people? How do you want people to feel after they've read your book or books? Um, so examples would be that some people have a reputation for being a middle grade author, but they actually want to be a young adult author. So they need to shift into that space. How do they shift into that space? Well, obviously you write a YA book, which is obviously the first thing, but that's not enough. You need to then get into panels and events and conferences where you speak with other YA authors you need to start looking at the sorts of audiences that you're trying to resonate with so you've gone from middle grade which is more you're kind of dealing with the parents and the teachers to YA where you're dealing with the teenagers and the early 20 people and you need to be talking to them directly so you've got two different audiences and you need to move into that space yes you could be a middle grade and a YA author of course but if your vision and your mission is this year I want to shift from being this type of author to this type of author. You've got to think, right, well, what's, what, what does that look like? What's the perception of that author? And how do I fit into that? Um, it might be that you want to be known for like really serious business writing. You might want to be known for being um, an advocate for diversity and inclusivity. It might be that you want to be known as an entrepreneur. Whatever it is you want to be known as, think about that as part of your vision. And it will really help then, again, connect you with where you need to be and what you're trying to do. Does that all make sense? Okay, so again, fo focusing on the sort of the reflection side of things, um, I think it's, I'm gonna send you this presentation so you don't need to um, kind of remember all these different questions, but you can keep going back to these. So what you can do is you can look back at it as over the year, but then what you can do is, depending on how often you want to sort of check in with yourself, you can then check every month, every quarter. But the idea is that you do keep checking in to make sure that you're on target with where you wanna be. Um, so, you know, this is basically your, your kind of your essential SWOT analysis of yourself, of your own author career, which is something I don't think many people do. And it's quite challenging to do it for yourself because you have to be quite honest with yourself. Um, you know, so what were the biggest accomplishments in 2021? We've kind of touched upon that. What's been the biggest lessons that you've learned in the past year? And then you're going to be looking at your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities and the threats. So, you know, what could throw you off track this year based on your experiences in previous years? What kind of opportunities do you see this year that maybe you wouldn't have had before? Maybe because of all the work you put in. Yeah, oh, yeah. another Zoom. I'll call you back. All right then, bye. <laughs> um, oh, sorry then, about that. No, don't worry, love. And then what are the biggest weaknesses? <laughs> in your career um, that needs improving on, you know, and that's quite a hard one to think about, you know, being honest with yourself about where you're not as strong as you could be um, and how do you get the help you need to get that, get to where you need to be? You know, are you perhaps not so great on social media? Do you need a bit more of a confidence boost around doing public speaking? Do you not really like the idea of um, sort of doing in-person events in bookshops? Whatever it is that is your kind of scary place, um, is there something you can do to sort of help yourself with that? It, often it's just a mindset shift, but it's not quite as simple as just a mindset shift, as we all know. Um, so, yeah, have a think about those things. And here are some examples, some like real life examples of some of the steps um, that people have put into all the plans that, you know, part of their vision. That's what's made them um, want to work harder, do more writing, whatever it is that's kind of pushing them forward. So. Obviously, you don't want to have a million and one things in your list. Otherwise, it's going to get ridiculous. But, you know, Chris has come up with three. I think that's a 
a three is probably a good safe space to be in. Um, but some of these steps will help them to get to, to that, to make that vision a reality. So for a lot of the people that I work with, building their contacts, their sort of network is a really big priority for them because they want, they do see themselves as having a long-term author career and they do want to build their author brand. So you've already said, Krista, about the email list, for example, there's other ways of of building up your contacts um, but an email list is brilliant because it, that is the one thing that you kind of own yourself you know nobody can take that away from you if Facebook suddenly closes down you lose all those contacts you know if you're on Instagram and they suddenly decide to just delete all your followers for the sake of it which let's face it has happened um you've you, you're, you're stuck um but the email addresses you get to keep um, and you need to think about, again, lead generation. So it's really good that you've been thinking about, Denise, about getting this prequel done and trying to draw people in that way. Um, lead generation tools like a chapter or a prequel or a short sequel, or something connected to the first book can be really good. But what you need to bear in mind is you're tapping into the group of people who have already read that book. It's not so it's, it's great but you might also want to think of another lead generating tool that's not that's for people that have not yet fully bought into your book and not bought into your brand so there's no harm in having two running concurrently um even from the same website there's no harm in doing that an example be another short story yeah can sorry i don't understand What's the, what is the lead generation so basically it's something that you offer for free in exchange for an email address Oh, right. So Denise came up with the idea that she's got a sequel to her book. And so she's going to basically create that and she can offer that to in exchange for a P, um, for an email address. So the person gets the PDF and in exchange they get the email address. So it's basically so you're helping you amass a, a database of people who you can promote to and market to um, when you've got an event coming up or you've got a new book coming up. And it is... It's, what, it's something that everyone's always talking about is this mailing list, but I do agree it is really important. And it's something that, again, typically will drop to the bottom of the to-do list because it's kind of a bit boring, let's <laughs> be honest. Yes, it is. You mentioned PDF right now, so that just gave me an idea. I just had, had to ask. Denise, do you know how to make your prequel into like an EPUB file and Morbi file and everything? Um... Not on my laptop, no. It's something okay, I will, I'll help you. I'll help you. So if you need help, if anyone needs help like doing that, I know how to do it. It's super easy and I'll, I'll, I'll can take you through the, everything on Thank board you. and everything. So yeah, yeah no problem. Because if you, if you want to do a book magnet, it's important that you can't, you can't just, just deliver the PDF because people are going to get furious. You need the Mobi and you need the <laughs> Yeah. yeah. People so we'll talk about it. just contact me when you need that and we'll do it. I will do, thanks. No problem. I'm sorry, but I can't help you. Um I would say, yeah, you're right. People do get furious about not books not being in certain um formats. But you know, bear in mind as well that I think this is this is a marketing tool. So um, you know, do what you can with it. But you want to you never want to give anything away for free. You always want to make sure it's in return for an email yeah. address um so they sign up to to be contacted by you so that's one example of, some, of something that I've been working on with some with some of our authors where they they're like I really want to make this the thing that I do this year and they they're like I want to get a thousand more followers on social media I want to have 500 more people in my or double my mailing list you know they kind of come up with a number um some people want to expand into a different platform so we've done a lot at the moment with Clubhouse is anyone on Clubhouse Clubhouse, what's that? That's the app, right? Where you it's um, yeah, well, it's, a, it's a social media. It's a new, so oh. not new, it's a year old now. Social media, which is, um, it's all audio. So basically it's like you go in to a room where somebody's hosting a room and they're speaking on a certain topic. And then you can put your hands up and they will let you come up to the platform, the speaking platform, and then they will put the mic onto you. And then you'll be able to ask them questions or talk about what you're doing or whatever. So it's kind of like, imagine like um like a virtual conference hall and you've got a speaker and then they invite people to come up on stage and speak with them it's that kind of situation and there's a lot of a load of um business being done on there i mean there's i've got an author who has been on there every day for the past year running a breakfast show and she has 
made an absolute fortune from it um selling her book and selling services as part of you know connected to her book um that's but amazing. my god but that's just for iphones that right works. what's that Krista? that's just for iphones right you have to have an iphone to get onto clubhouse yeah I think. it's an apple thing at the moment yeah yeah oh, i hate that okay yeah, yeah. Thank, you, but thank you it's a really good idea um, yeah, there's a big writing community on there, but big book community, publishing community on there, readers, reviewers, all talking about their favourite book of the year, that kind of thing. So, uh, you know, it's it, that's another thing that people are looking at is other social media platforms. There was something in the bookseller earlier about how, um, you know, publishers are making so much money out of TikTok. But then when they were interviewing the people that are running the campaigns, like, well, what is it you're actually doing? They're like, well, uh, and they're like, well, what's actually working? And they couldn't really sort of say, because I don't think anyone knows. It's not like a secret recipe to success on TikTok, for sure. But I think, again, it's one of those things, if you put loads of time into it, you're going to get the results. Whether you'd want to spend that amount of time on it is obviously down to you. I mean, this woman that's been on doing this breakfast show five days a week, I mean, I wouldn't want to do that. But it's worked for her. And that's been what she's put all her focus energy into. Um, and it's, you know, it's paid off for her. So that's great. But... Um, I think you do have to be quite, how do I explain it? I think you need to be very clear with your boundaries on social media in particular, because it's a bit like a, a rabbit hole that you could get lost in, isn't it? And before you know it, you spent like three hours on social media when really it's not helped you achieve very much. So it's like, how are you going to, how are you going to do your social media? How are you going to plan it? Are you going to do like an hour a day? Are you going to do an hour a week? Like, are you going to schedule your posts in advance? And like, what are you going to do to try and get a bit more control over it? So you don't, end up being controlled by it, I think is kind of quite important. Um, then another goal, for example, is just completing the first draft of the next manuscripts and working with an editor. I mean, you're all writers, so pretty much all of you will be writing something at the moment, even if you've just published a book, even if there's like 53 different book ideas in you right now, you've got at least one that you're working on right now. So it's kind of like, well, how do you make sure that you get to the end of that? Do you need to block some time out, like I say, every day to focus on it? make sure it doesn't keep dropping to the bottom of the to-do list try not to give yourself too many things to do make that the thing you're going to focus on for a while um and then it's like you can read them all like get more book reviews um write more blog posts for your own blog but maybe also trying to get some sort of guest slots on the people's websites um a lot of people i'm noticing at the moment authors are kind of reviewing and reading and reviewing other authors books in their genre and trying to like build up a bit of a network like that which i think is quite a nice idea of giving back and then Kind of getting support vice versa which i think is quite a nice thing to do um and then of course there's the whole querying agents publishers that route which can also oh. take you down a very different path and can be again a bit massive time drain um so i think being a bit more scheduled and um considerate with the amount of time you want to spend on that right and giving yourself a deadline so for example i my advice is to authors that are going down that route for the first time choose maybe 10 agents that you want to pitch to pitch to all of them at the same time give them six weeks to at least respond or acknowledge your email and then go on to the next 10 and the next 10 don't wait forever for those first 10 I've got one author who literally wrote to one agent she's like I want this one agent and she waited a whole year and then the agent said no she lost all that time because she didn't want to go anywhere else and I get that feeling but she could have been published by now the amount of time that she spent waiting for that one person um so again i think it's just been really quantifying each step making sure you're giving yourself a deadline um make sure you've got yourself enough time don't rush it but also don't don't drag it out so it kind of ends up sort of self-defeating i think um that's my opinion anyway so planning and consistency equals success so i think the clearer the vision the clearer the plan and then the clearer the plan the easier it is to be consistent um and the more you stick to the plan, then obviously the more likely it is that you're going to achieve success, whatever that looks for look, looks like for you. Um, I always use the example of Abiola here because Abiola obviously has just signed a massive three book, you know, six figure deal with um, Simon and Schuster, and I've been working with her first of all as her PR, and then obviously her business partner on a couple of the businesses since 2013, and. She's self-published three books. You know, she's built her own publishing house. She's 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 done stuff, so much stuff to get to this point. None of, none of that sort of six-figure conversation happened overnight. And it was really about just consistently knowing what she wanted to achieve, which was the three-book deal, six-figure, big traditional publishing deal, 
um but also being quite um so being consistent but also planning each year right this year I'm going to move a bit closer to that goal by doing xyz and that's just looking at how she's managed to do it and looking at the other you know we've worked with over 400 authors now over at literally seeing the ones that have succeeded and the ones that have kind of not done quite as much as they wanted to there's definitely a pattern in that kind of being really consistent and a lot of the authors I work with who are so lovely that they get very distracted by the next thing and sometimes it's not related to a book and um not really relevant to their author career so I mean and a really good example is a lot of authors get distracted by being a speaker and then they stop writing and then you're not an author anymore because you're not writing at all you just you're a speaker and that's fine and that's great but then to go back and sort of say but I haven't achieved the three book deal yet I haven't done all these things like well you, you got sidetracked um, there wasn't consistency in in how you sh- showed up as an author do you know what I mean so I think it's easy to get distracted um, and it's fair enough to get distracted but then you kind of have to think well what outcome am I going to get if I keep getting distracted from the thing that I'm actually trying to do which is be an author um, and the missing ingredient here really is the accountability I think because I think a lot of us can convince ourselves and I'm talking from personal experience now that we've done it or we've tried or yeah okay it's not worked out but I give it my best shot when actually truthfully hands on heart maybe we didn't necessarily do all the things we said we were going to do and that's where I really think accountability can come in to its own so like I say if you did if you do want to this, there's no charge for any of this extra bits if you want me to check in with you if you want to buddy up with someone um message me after and I'll sort of see how we can connect and help each other out so I do think that would be really nice to help help each other be a bit more accountable um just check in basically see what works for other authors which is why I like to do a group um like this because rather than a one-to-one because then you can kind of learn from other people so one of the things that I think really works is monitoring your success through mini wins. So you've obviously got these really big, you know, 50,000 pounds worth of sales and, you know, the big goals, but you could break them down to smaller goals. And actually each time you do recognize and celebrate that particular win. I don't know about you guys. But I'm absolutely crap at that. I'm crap at going, Oh my God, I've just achieved the thing that I've been trying really hard to achieve for the past two years. Cause I've suddenly moved on. I'm like, but now I've got to do this. And it's like, I've got swept away. Um, and it's really good to just stop and actually think, Oh my God, I've done that. However you celebrate, you know, um, but try and monitor and then celebrate the successes. And then the other thing that I've been doing a lot recently, um, which is kind of aggravating, but also seems to work is putting the things I really don't want to do at the top of my to-do list and making myself do them first thing. Oh my God, it was a struggle at first. <laughs> but it's got all that crappy stuff done that I needed to do. And um, it actually feels quite nice when you've done the crappy stuff because you realise you've been putting it off for a very long time. Um, for me, it's accounts and like money, just keep it on top of numbers. I'm not, I'm not a numbers person, I'm a words person. So I find it very boring to do any kind of invoicing, accounts, anything. I'm just not into it um so that's what I'm trying to do I'm trying to be a bit more like that um so yeah so it's all about time management structure discipline yeah all that kind of boring stuff but it's also about rewarding yourself when you've done a good job and celebrating your wins measuring your progress as you go and not just at the end of the year that's the other thing but this new year workshop thing is like what do you want to do by the end of the year but what about trying to look at what you want to achieve throughout the year break it down into more manageable bite-sized chunks you're actually going to then be able to reward yourself a bit more regularly than just at the end of the year. Plus, if something's not working, then you can kind of go, hang on, this isn't working. What can I do to change it? Rather than assessing it at the end of the year and thinking, well, it's too late now. Can't do anything about that. Um, you know, so just try and keep track um, a bit more regularly. And Hello. then I'm throwing this in. Yeah, sorry. Um, I am here. This is not even about what your screen. I don't know why my I'm not up. Oh, well, your video is not on. Yeah, but it's not off either. No, because I can stop your video. Hmm, let's have a look. If I try stopping your video and see if that does anything. Right, yeah, you've just stopped it. Right, try. And I've, now I'm asking you to start video. Does that do anything? Right, let me start the video. No, I pressed start video, oh. nothing happened. Oh. Krista? 
Yes. Can you help? <laughs> I think it's usually uh, I it has to be under Vanessa's end. I think. Okay. The camera is not turning on. Yeah, so I don't, don't think there's anything you can do. Okay. Plug it in and out. Maybe you need to. Are you you using it in a browser or are you using an app? Um, I've just turned it on straight from my laptop. I just press the link. Yeah, and then, so you're you're in website. your Google Chrome or your yeah. website. Yeah, so you might need to allow it on your website. Probably up to the left corner or right corner, you need to allow like a webcam thing um, somehow. But it's very hard to to help right yeah, now. Yeah, depends with on it. you. Um, yeah. Right. Okay. Mm. Basically, but your web your website settings, Vanessa, have said that you, you said that you can't have a, a webcam on. Yeah, you can go to you can go on Google and like type in your browser and then I mean the name of your browser, right? So Google Chrome, turn on webcam in browser and then see if it can't turn on webcam in browser and see if it troubleshoot like that. Right. Okay. okay. Thank you. It normally okay. I'll try and sort it out. Carry on. Thank you. Thank That's you. all right. <laughs> Don't worry. Um. So I've thrown this in because for a lot of people that I've worked with over the past few years, they really are trying to focus a little bit more on social media and the sort of social media content that they can put out. So I've thrown this in and hopefully it'll be helpful to some of you. Um, it's basically, it's the one, two, three, four rule, okay? Which is basically, if you think of social media in groups of 10 posts, okay? So you'd have one out of those 10 would be selling the book with direct links to the bookshops and to your website so people can pre-order or buy. So out of every 10 posts, you'd want one that's a direct sales post, yeah? And then you'd want two posts that are more non-book related content that sort of helps to show the other side of you. So not just the authory things. So it's what you want to show. You don't have to show personal details, right? It's like you could like be your love of the musical theatre. It could be your love of walking or whatever it is that you, you love to do. But just to humanise you as a, as a person, as a writer and show there's more to you. Um, people buy into all that. They love all that. But you don't want to do too many. So you want to do two, roughly two posts out of every 10. And then you want to do three posts that's sharing other content that's created by you, that's relevant to you and your book themes and your author brand that you know should be of interest to your audience. So always think, what, what does the audience want? What, what do my readers want to know about? So it could be expanding on some characters in your book. It could be um, exploring some of the themes in your book. So, you know, if you've got a nonfiction book on a health topic, it could be picking up on a current news article and commenting on it or you know, just trying to come up with something creative that really is very focused on the book, but kind of not just selling the book, right? And then four other posts would be sharing other people's relevant content. So it doesn't mean that you do one post selling, two posts humanize, um, you know, your content posts. It wouldn't be three posts then of doing content about the book and then four posts of retweets. It would be mixing it all up. If you think of every 10 having this kind of ratio, it should help you to plan your um, your social media a bit better. And like I say, I know for a lot of people trying to get a bit more in control of that scheduling and um, like using a schedule. So we use Content Cal um, at literally, but obviously there's loads of different social media scheduling um, tools. But trying to schedule some posts so that you don't feel quite so overwhelmed by social media is definitely one of the strategies I would recommend you know spend block out a couple of hours to, pr to pre-plan pre-create some content and then have it all scheduled and ready to go would definitely be a good idea so you don't feel so overwhelmed um and then just a note really to be kind to yourself because you know everyone's always going but everyone's got the same number of day hours in the day and everyone's you know busy and everyone's just, but it's like you can only do what you can do so try and avoid comparisons with other people because you don't have a clue about what they're doing in the day. They could literally have nothing else to do but spend all their day putting social media content together. So don't, don't beat yourself up if you're like, how do they get this much time? Um, and I think how much risk you want to take really does depend on you, your vision. You know, it's, it's really down to you. So how much time you want to invest, um, how you want to play the game, essentially. Try to avoid that comparisonitis because it's, uh, it's a dangerous path to take um and just you know be clear on your vision and make sure that you don't get into that trap of spending too long on the the, the kind of the fun bit and maybe avoiding the tricky bit and um, that's actually going to get you there 
So I'm going to do a QA and a now. So if anybody has any questions, this is a really good time. If you want to ask me questions, if you want to ask any of the other authors on the panel questions, you're very, very welcome to fire away. And it can be on anything. It can be on any of the things we talked about or marketing or branding or social media, anything. Can I ask something? Of course you can, Alice. Um, so I'm I'm not sure where, well, how this compares to everybody else in the workshop, but um, I'm sort of at the beginning of... I don't know what to call it, my journey, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so I have a full, a, a polished manuscript that's, um, yeah. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get an agent. I want a traditional publishing deal. That's what I want. Cool. Um, and I had one re request for a full, yeah, which was ultimately rejected, but it's given me a bit of confidence to think that, mm. okay, well, it's the kind of thing that could get, uh, um, you know, could get some interest. But um so I thought I know that my goal this year is just to keep going with trying to get the right agent, get somebody interested. Yeah. But in the meantime, I feel uh, I wonder, is there something that I can be doing that's not just doing that? Because like, you talk a lot about author brand. I don't I'm not an author yet, really. I don't have an author brand. But is there. Yeah, no, I, I totally like get that. Or, yeah. Or should um, I just focus on this for now? Well, I, I mean, I speak to quite a lot of literary agents and they they basically will say to you they would say to you don't just work on the one book so it doesn't necessarily mean you have to re write a whole new second manuscript but ha start outlining or thinking about other books because what I have noticed a lot recently a lot more so than I've ever done in the past or 10-15 years is that an agent will like a book or they'll and or they'll like the author but they don't necessarily want to be the one selling that particular book so they'll say to you what else have you got so I think it's a good idea to have other things up your sleeve for when you're in that situation. It's literally happened the last in, in December where an author who's part of the author school was pitching an idea. And I said to her, have two other ideas in your email. Just see what happens. And the agent said, I don't like the first idea, but I really like the third. And she'd written the first in full, but she hadn't written the third. So she was very honest. She said, I haven't started writing that yet. They're like, right, we'll give you three months. And so, you know, it, it, I think it's about showing that you're commercial and that you understand the business, which you obviously do, and sh but showing that through your ability yeah. to write more than the one book, because mm -hmm. agents don't want to take on an author for just one book, basically, anymore. They Even if they gave you a deal for one book or an uh, agreement for one book, they would be pitching more. So Abiola, for example, she had one book that she went to the agent with that's not the book she's just been signed with. They yeah. they pitched that out, it didn't go anywhere. Then they, they worked on a different idea and that's the one that's been signed. But she was already in with the agency by that point. Um, and once you're in with the agency, of course, then you're in, you know, it's very unlikely they're gonna get rid of you for a good couple of years. So um, yeah, I think that would be something I'd recommend is try and have more things up your sleeve. The other thing mm -hmm. is, yes, you haven't got a book published yet, but you certainly can be building your author brand because I don't believe that you're an author when you're published. I believe you're an author when you've written that first or when you're writing that first manuscript. Mm -hmm. And you can be doing things on social media that kind of show that you're a serious author, that you're committed. Mm -hmm. Um, again, agents tell me that they they Google the author, they look at what they're putting on social media, they obviously check whether they're being like, you know, racist or homophobic or offensive to anyone because they're straight out, you know, obviously. Yeah. And then they start looking at how serious they are about their art, basically. Um, so about just, their... their art, you know, their their writing. Okay. they um they want they want to see commitment. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you Thank can be you. doing posts on social media yeah. that are kind of a bit more writery um and yeah i think you could be outlining some other ideas okay. write a book magnet too and get a start building a mailing list it's never gonna hurt you yeah i mean that's true one of my authors um definitely got a book deal after they said about their they had a, like a fourteen thousand um uh, mailing list and they definitely that was definitely a, a very big selling point for this or mm -hmm. this particular agency so yeah okay cool thank you that's helpful you're welcome. And congratulations on getting a full request. That's amazing. Sorry? Congratulations on getting a full request. That's well well done. That's really good. Oh, thank you. Thank I you. But then, but then you also 
get complete straight rejections and so then yeah you know, who's right you know <laughs> i also had uh, the biggest finance agent contact me about the visa owners said the full um and then he said no that was a pretty tough yeah that was pretty tough to get so i guess it, it sucks success yeah. but you know. yeah it does it's horrible yeah. i mean any kind of rejection in life generally is, is shit and then if you get a rejection for something that you've poured your heart into for a long time and you've kind of almost been given the chance and then it's taken away is yeah. is really but i always think that that really wasn't the right person for you you know and you need with an agent you need somebody who completely gets you and just passionately shouts about you and, and you know you are their priority and if there's even a glimmer of um, doubt then they're definitely not the right person for you you know it has to have to be 100 percent on your back on, on you're absolutely back. right he, he wasn't like he's a really nice guy but no the book that he um uh, or the authors represent i don't write like write like them so it wouldn't make sense mm. yeah. exactly 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 that um Denise, how are you feeling about your sort of, do you feel like you, do you, are you the sort of person who has like a plan and a to-do list and stuff or how do you tend to do it? Every day, yes. <laughs> and do you um, manage to get through the to-do list or is there always stuff on the bottom that you haven't managed to do yet? Um, <laughs> occasionally there's something I've not got to, um, but I tend to keep my to-do list realistic. Um, so I do plan in advance. I mean, 2021 was a really busy year for me not only with I am winter coming out but starting my own business yeah um so I think that's kind of it's helped me in one way and yeah. it, it's also um taken up a lot of time yeah. in another way as well so 2022 going forward um I've spent the whole of last year building up a portfolio of ghostwriting um which I've done so I've achieved that and I, I'm really proud of myself for doing that so last week um I've ramped up my prices that I charge to do mm. ghostwriting um mm. so that I can actually scale it down and concentrate on my own writing mm. so on the one hand I've learned over the past 12 months to write faster right and better you know i can i can write six thousand words a day um and look back on them and they're actually good <laughs> um you know whereas a couple of years ago they wouldn't have been yeah um but at the same time it, it's taken up so much of my time building mm -hmm. up my business mm -hmm. um so now i've reached the stage where as i say i can scale that back a little bit and focus on my own writing going forward so, so you've increased the value and you've decreased the volume basically which is a very yeah. sensible way to to go when you're having yeah. to spread your time across different things um and you've earned your stripes so you know uh, you can you can do that and i think i think it is about carving out the time and i think yeah i don't i don't actually know a single author that hasn't got another job no i don't think i know any no i don't know any other i mean i know some, that have, some people that have retired but I don't know any who all they do is write their books and do author stuff all day or night. Like I don't know anyone that does that. No. Everyone, everyone I know has something else that they do. Um, pretty much something else that pays the mortgage. It's like the steady exactly. end. Yeah. And then you know, everything else is a win. So I feel like, you know, it's very easy to kind of think, right, well, I can't really do that because it's not earning me any money at the moment. You know, it's not um it's like putting the money it's like putting the money at the time in now but getting the money kind of two years later um yeah. but you've got to again you've got to have that vision in mind it's like well what do I want to achieve in at the end of this year in 2030 what kind of author do I want to be known as and sometimes you have to sort of box out some time where you're not going to get paid yeah. yet but you are working on that longer term vision um and it is a balance don't get me wrong I, I completely I know I know from my own experience it's, it's easy to kind of think I should I should just do this extra job because this is the thing that's going to pay the bills but then you end up not doing the thing that you love and you know you don't end up not doing the writing so um it's a balance my advice is to do exactly what you're doing carve out time every day have a plan um be realistic with a to-do list it's, it's all you can do it's all you can do yeah, because I'm very guilty of trying to do everything at once, unfortunately. So that is something, another thing that I've learned over the past 12 months is 
you can't do everything at once. No, you know, so you can't do it well, can you? No, mm. exactly. So I've actually learned to, to separate the things that need to be done so that I can have time for my writing. Good. So again, that's another achievement. Over yes, the past it month. is. Yeah. And if that's working, then, you know, keep going because <laughs> that's quite something <laughs> to be proud of. F1, do you have any questions or? I guess I mean oh, that, I... that you talk about where trying to manage the time because mm. I'm a primary school teacher by day so right. my time is even if I'm school and then sometimes at home I still have to do stuff yeah um so the I would love to just spend time to just write um but don't get the time to do so um so I guess one thing that I was thinking is has anyone ever outsourced the social media side of it so having someone else deal with your posts and like the schedule inside of things as well well I mean definitely from from literally PR's perspective we do a lot of social media management for authors I mean we tend to do it in fits and starts so it'd be like we'll do a two-month campaign and then they'll take it back again when things have got calmed down a bit you know Mm. and it's on it's kind of on off situation so because most people can't afford to just pay someone to do it forever um but you know there's there's nothing wrong with outsourcing either the stuff that you kind of don't really get that much pleasure from um or the stuff that you find particularly time consuming there's no there's no harm in that um I mean what I would say is for example again this is just a bit of advice from what I've seen other people doing is blocking out sort of an hour every other day for example so it's not an everyday thing because that might seem a bit overwhelming but every other day blocking out an hour either first thing in the morning or sort of last thing at night when you're not working and just giving yourself a concentrated task, just one thing to do in that hour. So it could be, for example, creating social media content. You could get quite a lot of content done in an hour Mm. and then schedule it out. It doesn't have to be that you do ad hoc, spontaneous, on-the-go posts. It can be much more scheduled and that's okay. Um, So it's about getting that balance. But yeah, I mean, even if you just did, or even half an hour every other day, that's better than nothing. Yeah. You'd have to be quite strict with yourself on it and say to everyone, I am not available between yeah. 9 and 9.30, yeah. you know. Because over Christmas I had COVID and that was my best time to like do <laughs> yes. posts. I scheduled like a 12 days of Christmas kind of thing. Yeah. So, like, but I could only do that because I was stuck in my room. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, exactly. Like, yeah, so once the term starts, it's like, yeah, you've got no time for anything. No, so, I understand that. Like I say, schedule. Yeah. I think pretty much everyone I know has another thing they've got to do to pay Mm. the bills so um you're definitely not alone with that um and I think you know maybe if you think what is your priority what is it you say if it was for example social media then you could sort of do right this week I'm going to focus on um so here's an example so what for last year for about a month I set myself an alarm at 9 15 at night because the kids are always in bed by that point Mm. so I'm like right 9 15 to 9 30 I would do some social media stuff and it was like really basic stuff that would not test my brain at that time of night, like just following people or commenting on some of their posts, like following certain hashtags and stuff like that. And it made such a difference. I got like an extra thousand followers on Twitter in the space of like a couple of months, just from doing a consistent, again, it's that consistency, Mm -hmm. consistent work. And it was only 15 minutes a day Mm -hmm. and it wasn't every day. It was probably like four days a week. But even that, so it's, it's about consistency, mm. even if it's small bursts. I don't know if anyone else has got any other tips, Rekwa. Can I ask a question, please? Sorry, I'm really late to the party. That's all right. <laughs> Chaos with um, husband, home late and children's bedtime, unfortunately. Um, all right. I have actually just started writing um a book which yeah. I still find for me I find that quite hard to sort of say out loud actually because um, I haven't really told many people um obviously Helen you know what I <laughs> thank you you know what I do um for a job um you've you've followed me on social media yeah. um I have no idea really where to start with it all other than get stuff written so when it's all in here <laughs> get it written but um obviously I'm a parenting expert by mm. day um I'm not writing another parenting book because I feel like there's probably quite a lot of them out already um but it is a book 
I'm trying to not give it away. Uh, it is a book <laughs> that um, is for parents, but it's kind of a humorous take on parenting. Okay. Um, is it non-fiction? But it's, oh. Yes, non-fiction. So, um, yeah, so it's more of the humorous side to parenting from, you know, an expert's point of view, but also being a parent myself. Mm -hmm. um, and I've worked in the childcare sector for over 20 years, so I have several anecdotes already stored up here and written down over the years from, uh, from various children and parents. Um, it's just sort of where to start with it all, really. Like, I have I'm no idea. Much. This is like a whole brand new area for me it's that's... a big that's the big question I mean I think the, it sounds like this is like a bit of a cliche thing to say but the first thing you need to do is write the book um yeah you know you can't do anything until the book's at least the first draft's done once the first draft's done you can bash it over to somebody else and they can give you an opinion and then you basically work and work on your book as as everyone here who's written a book knows until you hate the book because you can't edit it anymore and if you edit it one more time you think you might actually just not do the book anymore that's how bad it has to get until you've done enough on the book um and so write the book and have very much clearly have in your mind the audience for that book which is obvious for yours and start building or, or continue building but with the book in mind the audience of the people that you're going to be marketing that book to so you know, you're doing the right things by having a social media that's clearly on brand, but you could be doing a lot more. Um, you don't necessarily need to be on all social media platforms, but I would recommend that you definitely need to be on Twitter and Facebook for parenting. Um, and again, it's thinking about the audience and you need to really think about what it is that you're going to do when that book is ready to go. Do you, you know, what's your plan for publication? Do you want it to be self-published? Do you want to try and get a traditional publishing deal? When do you want the book to be out? If you want the book to be out as soon as possible, then going the big traditional publishing route is probably not your best bet because it can take years to go through that process. Um, so, yeah, you need to think about what you want, basically. And that will dictate the publication path that you take. Whether you go traditionally published or self-published or you go hybrid published, however you go, you will need to be focusing on building your author brand. Um, and that means talking about your book. You don't have to talk about the book this early on. But um, don't be afraid to talk about your book. Don't be, no one, no one's going to nick your idea. No one's. Well, you're no the first people that have heard about it so far. This, well, well done for, for sharing. Uh, don't don't feel that you need to. Yeah, don't don't worry about that because you're the right person to write the book. You know that's that's un, unquestionable. So um, own it basically. Uh, start talking about the fact that you've got this book and try and work out how you would describe that book in one sentence. The old elevator yeah. pitch. Um, and if you can't do that, then you need to try because you need that clarity of what that book's about so that you can pitch it to an agent or a publisher or a reader. So, yeah, and, that's um, the best things to do. Sorry. And obviously, um, I do my job as a parent consultant and I'm on social media every day, Instagram, mm -hmm. Facebook and Twitter, you might have noticed. Um, and so I've kind of got a good handle of, of working social media. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of go in fits and starts though because it can take up so much time so yes. when I've had a busier day it's harder but I've also started recently um freelancing as well for the press so I right. write quite a lot of articles for the nationals I suppose that that will probably help in terms of PR yeah it would um yeah it's just all such a it's something I've been thinking about for a while and then when I started really focusing on my consultancy last year the press stuff kind of came along and mm. it's all just yeah the paths are just all taking different going different directions I mean, to what I was initially thinking but I really want yeah. to get my book written so yeah well that's the first step that's definitely the first step get that first draft done and and whilst you're writing it think about um like I say how you would like it to be published um and you might have to adapt how how you want it to be published down the line but you at the moment you need a, a kind of a clear vision of right I want it to be out by let's say for example I want it to be out by Christmas um therefore the best route for me to publish is could probably going to be self-publish and then I could use that as a springboard and a platform to get more attention on me more attention on my business and my skills and then have a second book that you would then publish um or pitch to a traditional publisher so and there's no you don't have to do one or the other does self-publishing tend to work quite well or y yeah does it, it just depend or 
it can work incredibly well, especially for a non-fiction book because you get all of the royalties, you know. So if you self-publish um, and you can self-publish with a team of people who are experts, so you're paying them to do the cover design, you know, you're not doing it yourself. So it's self-publishing, but with a team of people. But then they hand you all the book files and you then put it on Amazon or you do it however you want to do it, Ingram, whatever it is. And you then get the full the full whack of the money. Whereas if you go traditionally published, you're getting 10%. But of course, you're not having yeah. to pay for the production um, and you're getting a wider reach and stuff like that. So, yeah, but no, there's if you're selling, if you've got a decent network, self-publishing is definitely a good good way to go. And it's definitely a good place to start because it builds up your brand, your author brand, which is what I'm always harping on about. <laughs> okay, thank you. And I've got a question. Yes, so, um, as you know, I've got a book coming out this year. <laughs> saying then that I should be already tweeting or talking about that book um I think you can talk about the fact that you're writing the book but I am always hesitant to say in, because you're in your situation you're getting it traditionally published so you're not actually controlling when it comes out so mm. I wouldn't say when it's coming out you can say it's um you know the plan is it's coming out this year and I'm working on it but I don't think there's any I mean for your book in particular, people know that there's a second book coming because I've sent a press release out about it. <laughs> right. So, well, no, what I mean is, should I, how much of the book? Oh, no, I don't, should, no. But again, if you were self-publishing the book, you would control when it comes out, you would control, you know, what makes it through the cut. Whereas because you're traditionally publishing, you're not going to have any control over the pictures that are used. You're not going to have any control over the content. You know, obviously you are, do you know what I mean? You're mm -hmm. going to be involved, but you ultimately it's not your final say. It's the yeah. final say. So you don't want to leak a bit of content that then doesn't make it into the book or anything like yeah. that. You, yeah. know? So you can, you can sort of, I mean, I wouldn't even give away the plot, any of the plot, to be honest. I just sort of, but I wouldn't talk about the fact that you're working on another one. I think when somebody's got a book out, and it's a book like Baller Boys where there's a, there's a following of it. To let, to let people know that you're working on it is quite exciting for those people that love the book. Okay. So I can talk about it without saying much? I would. <laughs> right, okay. Just don't give too much away because, like I say, we don't know what's going to make it through at this point. Okay. Right. It's definitely a good idea. As an author, it's a good idea to sort of share a little bit of an insight into what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis as a writer. You know, so, I mean, the posts of, oh, I wrote 5,000 words today is a bit boring. Um, but if you wrote, I wrote 5,000 words today in a couple of hours, it's the first time I've managed to sit down and write for three weeks. Um, and then you did like hashtag, write, hashtag writing community, hashtag and writing, for example, then you'd probably see quite a lot of people retweeting and liking your post because there's like a lovely community on Twitter in particular of writers who would support that kind of content. But then you've got to think, right. who, who's your audience? Your audience probably isn't people in the writing community. It's going to be your readers that have already supported you through the first book. So this is where a mailing list has really come into its own because you could email them and go, exciting news, I've been doing loads of work on the second Baller Boys, just about to send you know, it off to the publisher, I'll keep you posted, that kind of thing. Right, yeah, yeah, okay. Right. So you want to kind of keep people in the loop almost about what you're doing without it being total spam. So it kind of goes back to this one. So, you know, you want to sort of maybe... Um, this is the three posts bit. So three posts sharing content created by you about the book and about your brand. Right. Um, for example, like um, I'm hoping to self-publish a children's book, picture book mm -hmm. about a family going on holiday to um, Ghana. And so before I actually said, this is what's going to happen because I was looking through my old photo albums of, my family I just did pictures of my old photo albums and like did caption this or um oh, nice. just talked about things that were on the um, picture or like oh I remember when we went here and I screamed my head off down this bit so it's like giving like that was my like insight into them goes oh and then did like a reveal of like next book coming um, nice. book coming out will nice. be about I like that because that's um that's that's kind of combining these two things of like humanizing 
mm. you as an author, but also putting in book related content. So, it's, yeah, it's a really nice idea. How's everyone? Anyone and anyone got any other questions? Because we have actually gone over, and I'm happy to ask answer any questions. But I'm also aware that some people might need to go. Everyone good? Good, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we didn't get to see you, Vanessa. I know. I even jumped off, <laughs> jumped back on, and it's the same thing. So I hope, you didn't do, hope you didn't do all your makeup for us, love. Otherwise, that was a waste of time. Right, well, I made a little bit of an effort because I've had COVID as well. So. Oh, yeah, of course. How are you feeling now? Yeah, much better. So I've spent oh, kind fun. of lots of time. You know, when you just get locked in your bedroom, you don't yeah, really need to make much effort, do you? So <laughs> as I've been out of prison for a few days now, I thought I'd make a little bit of an effort. Oh, no see me. I even put some earrings on. <laughs> oh, funny. Well, if it helps, Vanessa, I'm up in the event brights browser page and i can only see helen's um sharing share screen i can't see anyone not even myself oh, okay so, uh, oh but we can see you yeah, yeah I, I can see I you <laughs> <laughs> i was about to get naked so that's <laughs> uh, it's too cold there to get naked anyway surely <laughs> yeah um, no i have seven meters so it's fine <laughs> Well, thank you very much, everyone, for um, coming along to this first workshop of the year. Um, if you do want to, like I say, be part of this kind of... Oh, hello, dog. Sorry, I've got to go. My shopping's arrived. Ah, that's all right. <laughs> Messages if you want to be part of the accountability thing. No worries. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, if you, want to, if you want to message me afterwards, if you want to have somebody that you can be accountable to, if you want to... Um, have me check in with you sort of once a month once a quarter whatever it is you want um just so that you've got someone to help you uh you know be accountable to actually doing the thing you said you're going to do then message oh, yes, me off please yes please, yes please yes that'd yes, be please. nice thank you <laughs> yeah i think it's a good idea just to have somebody on your back <laughs> in a nice way um yes so yeah email me afterwards if you want to do that and I will also email you over the PDF so you can go through it again. Kirsty, you can go through it. And if you've got any questions, you can just let me know. Thank and I'll you. explain things to you a bit more. It's fairly self-explanatory. Um, yeah, the idea was just to give a bit of inspiration because I think, and also just to make people feel a little bit less alone in the fact that we're all struggling to keep on top of everything. Um, and But there are some ways of fitting it all in, I'm, I guarantee you. Um, if everyone else can do it, all these big authors will all there multiple book deals then we can do it um because they're no different right types. yes we can 100%. so yes hopefully that was a little bit of inspiration for you to start the year and i am doing other workshops the next workshop is on building an audience and there's a list of them i've, I've tried to come up with a schedule so every month there's something different so we're going to do like a um, masterclass on linkedin i'm not running that one where like how to use linkedin as an author which I think could be quite cool, actually, because I, I definitely could be doing a lot more on LinkedIn than I am doing. Um, and there is a big writing community. If anybody wants anything in particular, if anyone's like, I'd love to know more about X, Y, Z, then let me know and I'll find the right person to, to help us, basically. So if you want one... I just on... need the whole lot, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Someone to just do it all. Um, yeah. But yeah. So, yeah, I mean, just if there's anything, anything you think of, then we will be able to help. Um, you know, if there's any kind of marketing, branding, social media type stuff, then just let me know. I'll be um, emailing you every day now. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome to. Um, yeah, so the full, the full list of programme, the full programme for the um, next six months of events is on our Eventbrite page, which you should be able to follow it via that email that was sent earlier. You should be able to follow, and or you can just search literally PR on Eventbrite and it'll come up with the schedule, so... Have a look and um, yeah, I shall call it a night. And thank you very much for joining me. So I wasn't sat here on my own. That was nice. That <laughs> was really fun. Thank, thank you. you. Thank that was fun. You. Have a good evening. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.